Welcome to the Dark Train Review. It's been a while since we've had an episode and it's time to review a film that we've been talking about for a while. It is the 2012 version of Dread. Or Dread 3D as it's also known as. Exactly. I'm Jason Turner. I'm John Burt. Judge Dread is a, a British comic created in the uh, early 70s. Mm-hmm. Um, 2000 AD. Mm-hmm. Um, lawman, judge, jury, executioner set in a futuristic city known as Mega City One. This has already been made into a movie once before in the mid 90s with uh, Sly Stallone. Yeah. <laughs> I am the law. Yeah. I, wanted to, I wanted to touch on that briefly. Yeah, there was, a, there was another film yeah. of Judge yeah. Dredd. And, uh, you know, this is a future where violence is violence and drug use and um, overpopulation. Everything that we're currently dealing with in our present day society magnified times, you know, 12, yep. you know, really, 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 really uh, rough place to live in this type of society. You would need like martial law, martial law, stuff. pretty much. Yeah, almost yeah. kind of fascist yeah. in some ways a little yeah. bit. What I thought was interesting is, you know, day in the life of Judge Dredd, you know, he, you know, he's on he's in pursuit. And then the movie starts off with a chase. This is just a beat cop or a beat judge doing his thing, and he's damn good at it. Yeah. He has his uh, trademark weapon. Yep. The lawgiver. The lawgiver. And uh, it has, like, it has a customizable ammo. You you say what you want, and it gives you the ammo. Double whammy. <laughs> there was no double whammy. There was no double whammy. Whammy. I like how unapologetically violent this movie yes. is. It's, mm-hmm. I mean, it was R-rated. I'm just... Real gritty. Oh know? yeah, this is this is not a kid's comic book movie. Dread is straight up executing people right. in very creative and very effective ways. This movie looks really good, um, but even they actually made the goriness look really good. If that makes sense, mm-hmm. um, when somebody dies, it's they, it's very stylish, but it very it's done very beautifully. Yeah. Um, he then gets thrown into a situation where he has to train a uh, rookie uh, by the name of Anderson, who's played by Olivia. Th- Thoroughby. Very good in the movie. Um, she's actually a psychic. She's a mutant in the movie who can do psychic uh, psychic abilities such as reading people's minds. And guess who's her teacher? The right. ultimate lawman himself, yeah. Judge Dredd. You've got the experienced veteran mm-hmm. and then the rookie. You know, and he even calls her rookie. Yep. He refers to her as rookie all the time. He's like, he's like, I'm going to assess you and if you do anything wrong, you will fail. If you fail, you know, you're not going to be a judge. And um, she was barely passing, but because of her impressive psychic abilities, you know, the chief of police says, you know, let's see how this kid does. And um, so they go to this uh, big mega structure, like 200 stories tall, and there is a homicide, triple homicide. And that's where the story takes place. And, you know, if you haven't seen Dread by now, I'll kind of hold off on giving any more plot points away. This kind of future is, it's shown, but they don't really, they don't really go... Over the top. Right. It's like, very believable. Yeah, it's, it's very, believable. Very believable. You know, Dredd is almost like Robocop without the armor. I mean, he has to be, you know, absolutely, you know, strict. But the main villain in the movie is very good, too, played by Lena Headey. Um, she plays Mama. She's they, absolutely beautiful. Oh, yeah. But oh, yeah. They, they made her look bad in this. They do a really good job at making her look hideous in yeah. this movie and she plays on it so well mm-hmm. you know she is very believable in fact i you know i would say she's like the tony montana of the future yeah like she plays that part very yeah. very well is very believable very menacing and intimidating the thing about the dread character you know and from what i understand from the you know i'm an american so i don't really know much about british you know popular culture but apparently there's a huge following of dread in you know in england there's some people that uh, I think still had a bad taste in their mouth from the Stallone film. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, that's, you know, that's, I mean, yes, there can be comparisons, mm-hmm. but this movie shines above the, the Stallone version. I mean, don't get me wrong, when I first saw that one, I was like, oh, hey, that's cool, you know, and I liked, I liked the robot, the yeah. ABC yeah. robot. I yeah. thought he was just awesome. But um, this one kind of, you know, it was kind of, on, it was definitely probably made for a lot cheaper Yes. In the Stallone one. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, it was better. And actually, this Carl Urban version of Dread seems tougher than Stallone. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and it just, it just, he was just very, very convincing. And, you know, he was short to the point. Every once in a while, even though he had a mask on, he was still able to pull off some emotion. Just, yeah. Just, just a hint. Yeah. But he's a badass. You know, he's a good guy, but he's also a badass. Yeah. Sean, yeah, 3D. The 3D in the film was really good. 
Um, when I saw it at the theater, I saw it in 3D. And um, a couple things I did like about it was it wasn't like a 3D that says, hey, look, we can throw a <laughs> rock at you. Or, you know, they they really had a good excuse for the slow motion. Mm -hmm. um, from what I understand, if you know anything about filmmaking, uh, most films, you know, I mean, it depends on what they're doing, but most films are shot at different frame rates. And uh, for slow motion, you have to shoot uh, a lot of frames in a small amount of time. And when you play it back at a certain speed, you can get that really crisp slow motion stuff. This film actually used something that's technically acceptable right now, you know, extreme slow motion, 4,000 frames a second. That's crazy. That is insane. <laughs> um, but it actually used it as part of the plot. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, you know, whenever the characters take the drug of slow motion, that basically gives them a, an altered perception. You know, we need to have uh, really cool, pretty slow-mo shots. Oh, we'll have a drug that does that. Yeah. So, you know, there's a medical yeah. character who explains it as like your, you know, your brain perceives action as 1% its normal speed. And I'm just like, does it get you high, though? I mean, <laughs> does it make you feel good? Or you just everything's really slow? So, <laughs> you're, like, you're like, what if you drop your keys and you're like... It takes like 30 minutes to <laughs> you know, 30 walk minutes from your keys. car to your front door. <laughs> but I, I think I think it just kind of you know it just kind of accepts the fact that you know whenever the, you know, the colors and the the sparkles and everything that happens in slow motion is really visually appealing. So my my guess is is that they just kind of you know let the audience experience mm -hmm. the drug. But I can understand how that might be a little overplayed these days. But I thought in Dread it was done very very well and creatively as opposed to just yeah. throwing it in there. You know, as far as the 3D goes, the 3D was very effective. Mm -hmm. um, they shot it in 3D. It wasn't converted. They actually shot the film in 3D. And um, you know, as as a mm -hmm. film, I'm I am really bummed out that this movie didn't do better it's because a crime. It, it is it's, a crime. Yeah, it did not just, do well. You know, and it, it's I don't know if it's marketing or what, but yeah, I just I didn't really know about it. In fact, I heard about it yeah. through you. So it's like, okay, maybe the marketing wasn't really there. You know, I think I think the first trailer I saw, and of course it was on YouTube, because that's where I go watch all of my trailers. Um, I think I saw it, the first trailer, in July. And that was the first I ever heard of it. And it came out in September. Oh, wow. Yeah, you that know? have something to do with it. <laughs> one other thing of note is... Uh, one thing that the other film had, that this one had also, is a really great score and soundtrack. Oh, I love the music. The music is amazing. The in this music movie. is awesome in this. Like, that's one of the things. Whenever I watched the movie, like I picked up on first was mm -hmm. the music. I'm like, man, this music is badass. Like yeah. it really complements the action. Really complements the characters. Mm -hmm. It's kind of this techno rhythm, mm -hmm. not dubstep. Really awesome techno rhythm type stuff that that just is. It's really it pumps you up. I think what's also interesting is that even though it's a British comic, it's set in America. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's called the Cursed Earth. You know, yep. which I thought was interesting. Everything is practical. Um, you believe that Mega City One can actually could actually be a city of the future, mm -hmm. and Judge Dredd's uniform. He doesn't have the huge gold um, uh, shoulder pieces. You know, with the eagle and then the huge gold piece on the side. He has a more practical SWAT team kind of outfit with the with the Judge Dredd helmet on top, which yeah. I think is great. Um, so, you know, definitely it, it, it's part of that Christopher Nolan, Dark Knight era of comic book movies in regards to setting it in a practical future. And that's what I really actually liked about the movie. Looking at the, uh, the little documentary about, you know, 35 years with Dread, um, it looks like they were kind of making fun of Americans, American traits and stuff. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe it, would be, it would be interesting to see if somebody picked up this property and tried to go a different direction with it. I mean, not not making it, you know, huge like the Stallone film, mm -hmm. but still trying to, you know, kind of open up the scope a little bit. Uh, corrupted cops mm -hmm. and, um, you know, overpopulation and, you know, just, you know, mutants. Um, there weren't any, like, you know, like total recall mutants <laughs> with, you know, f smashed faces and, you know, deform deformities. But... You know, one of the main characters in the film is a mutant. You know, if you have a character that has an, you know, almost a superhuman type power, why not harness it and use it for good? Yep. Uh, on the Dark Train review, I'm going to give this one five stars. Great action, great cinematography, uh, great music, and um, a really cool, uh, a really cool character played by Carl Urban. He's, yeah. he's. I'm, I'm going to be watching what he does now in the future.
I, I agree with Jason. I give it five stars. It's a gem. It's a shame that it did not do well at all, and I will stand by it 110%. I don't care what the haters say. This is a this is a movie that deserves a sequel. It deserves a franchise behind it. The filmmakers did an amazing job. So, but yeah, um, thanks again for watching uh, the Dark Train review. Thanks, John, for watching it with me. And thank you. Uh, we'll be back on a next one. I'm not sure what we'll do next, but hopefully Looper. Hopefully Looper. Yeah, we're gonna try and get a. A looper watch in pretty soon and we'll do a review on that so thanks for watching thank you